What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three recent returns that I got back in the mail and profile each of the individuals that signed autographs for me through the mail. So this first one is a return from Ohio and it is from former Tigers left-handed pitcher slash Montreal Expo Fred Sherman on one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to tell you about Fred Sherman and his career in baseball. Fred Sherman was born in Ohio. He attended Dayton's Fairview High School where he learned to pitch a screwball while he was in high school. So a left-handed pitcher with a screwball. He also played first base and compiled a batting average of 340 while playing first base in, in hitting. After graduating from high school in 1962, Sherman did not sign a professional contract but instead signed an amateur baseball contract to play in an amateur baseball league in Dayton. During the 62 season, he compiled a 138 ERA, that's 1.38, and had 108 strikeouts and 99 innings. Well, this didn't go unnoticed by scouts, and in December 1963, Sherman signed with the Minnesota Twins. Originally, the Philadelphia Phillies offered him a signing bonus of just a thousand dollars to be a first baseman but opted instead to sign for five thousand dollars to play as a pitcher. At the time he was attending Ohio State University and decided to drop out of college and pursue his baseball career. During that first season in 1964 he played for the single A affiliate of the Twins, the Orlando Twins in the Florida State League and he compiled a 14 win, 13 loss record in 30 games, 28 as a starter, with a 2.33 ERA. During that season, he played against the Lakeland Tigers, and the manager of the Lakeland Tigers, Al Fedorov, actually noticed how good Sherman was doing against his club and suggested to the Tigers that they get Sherman from the Twins and get him in the Tigers organizations. So between that 64 and 65 season, the Detroit Tigers purchased the contract from the Twins for $8,000 of Fred Sherman. Sherman was assigned to the Rocky Mount Leaves where Al Fedorov, the guy that uh, coached against him the year before, was his manager. Sherman spent a total of four seasons in the Tigers minor league system including the stints in Rocky Mount for his first two years in 65 and 66, the Montgomery Rebels in 66 and 7, and the Toledo Mudhens in 1968. He was a starter in the minor leagues until 1967 and 68 when they moved him completely to a relief role in the bullpen while in the minors. During the 68 season, he compiled a record of 8 wins and 2 losses with just a minuscule 1.76 ERA in 30 games as a lefty reliever. In 1968, he would be on a team uh, in Toledo that would feature 13 future major league pitchers on that pitching staff himself included. He joined the Detroit Tigers at the start of the 1969 season and he made his major league debut on April 26, 1969. Well things didn't go so well in that debut and he gave up a home run to future Hall of Famer Carl Yastrzemski. He was returned to Toledo in 1969 for most of the season where he compiled a 6-3 record and a 3.16 ERA However, he was recalled in August of 1969 against the Oakland A's where he recorded his first win on August 28th against the A's. He finished the season in 1969 with the big club with a 1-0 record with a 6.76 ERA. In 1970, Sherman spent his first full season in the majors joining the Tigers bullpen. He earned his first save on May 22nd of that season, appeared in 48 games overall, all in relief that year, and compiled a 500 record of four wins and four losses with a 3.23 RA, striking out 58 batters in 69 and two-thirds innings. This wasn't bad for his first full year in the majors. By 1971, the Tigers got a new manager in Billy Martin, and Martin took a liking to Sherman and said that Sherman was one of his best pitchers in his bullpen. For that year in 1971, Sherman compiled 11 wins and 6 losses and 
a 2.71 ERA, which was one of the lowest ERAs in the American League that year. He made 69 pitching appearances for the Detroit Tigers that year, which was the second most in the entire American League. And he also ranked among the top saves leaders that year by finishing third with 20 saves. When 1972 uh, rolled around, Sherman wasn't used as much as a closer, but he did still have 12 saves in 57 games, but his record was 7 wins and 3 losses with a 364 ERA. In 1973, Detroit brought up another great left-handed pitcher in John Hiller, and Hiller basically took over as the closer for uh, the Tigers' bullpen that year. Hiller compiled such a great season, appearing in 65 games with 38 saves for the Tigers that year. There wasn't a whole lot of room for Fred making his appearances that year. Because of Hiller, Fred wasn't used as often, and he appeared in just 34 games in that 73 season. His record was 2-2, two and two, but his ERA jumped up to 4.23. After the conclusion of that 73 season, the Tigers felt they didn't need two left-handed pitchers in their bullpen, with Hiller coming off such a super season, that the Tigers decided to trade him to the Houston Astros for Gary Sutherland and Jim Ray. In his first year... With Houston, he did struggle in 1974, where his record went from two wins and five losses and an ERA of 4.11, but did have four saves and 54 appearances. He struggled a little bit that year with uh, some injuries to his back, and uh, he felt that he just couldn't get out there and do what he had to do, and actually went and had back surgery during that offseason after the 74 season. Sherman came back in 1975 with the Astros. He had 16 appearances with the Astros, but on June 8, 1975, the Montreal Expos got Fred for future considerations from the Houston Astros. So this is how he became a Montreal Expo. Surprisingly, the Expos initially used Sherman as a starter but in his first starts, he pitched well, but did not get run support from the Expos. So manager Gene Mock moved him back to the bullpen, and he ended up returning to the bullpen, and overall he appeared in 34 games for the 75 Expos, and compiled a 4-3 win-loss record, and got his ERA back to 3.54. In 1976, he was back in the bullpen, and he appeared in 31 games for the Expos, split his record at 2-2, two and two and had his ERA jump back up to nearly 5 at 4.95. In July of 76, the Expos decided to release him from his contract, and after that 76 season ended, he signed on and made a comeback attempt with the Pittsburgh Pirates. After signing with the Pirates in 1977, he did not make the big league club, and instead the Pirates opted to send him to their AAA ball club in Columbus in 49 relief appearances for Columbus. He compiled a 6-8 and eight record and a 3.90 ERA. Well, after that season, the Pirates let him go, and Fred decided to pack up and move to Japan to play and expected to pitch for the Hiroshima Carp that year. However, once he arrived to Japan, the Carp decided to instead ask him if he wanted to get coach, and he wound up being a player coach for one of the Carp's minor league affiliates at that time. Overall, Fred Sherman had an eight-year major league career, five of those with the Detroit Tigers. He appeared in 346 games and posted a lifetime career 3.66 ERA during his career. He had 33 wins and 26 losses to his credit. So after he moved back to the United States after his playing career, he moved back to his home state of Ohio, and he actually became employed at IAMS, the pet food company. So if any of you have cats or dogs, you're very familiar with IAMS. And Fred worked for IAMS for many years until, I'm guessing, he finally retired from that position as well. So... Very happy to add Fred's autograph to the collection, and we'll move on to the next return. All right, so this next return is from former Washington Senators pitcher Dick Such on two of four. I actually sent him four total, but he only signed two. He didn't keep the other two. Maybe two's the max that he signs. I don't know. 
or maybe only signs two of each card. I, I'm really not sure, but Dick did sign a couple cards for me. I'm glad to get those back. That's better than not getting any back at all, certainly. So let me tell you about Dick Such and his career in baseball. Dick Such, a North Carolina native, attending high school in North Carolina and later attended Elon College where he pitched on the baseball team. Originally in 1965, the New York Yankees drafted him in the 40th round, but he chose not to sign and was drafted the following year by the Washington Senators in 1966. He would pitch in 14 games that first year for the Burlington Senators in the Single A Carolina League, finishing with a respectable 6-8 and record with a 3.13 ERA. So his following year, this is kind of a dubious thing, in 1967, in just his second year, Washington Senators weren't a great team by any stretch of the imagination, and he was in their double-A affiliate playing for the York White Roses of the Eastern League, and Dick Such had the best way could be described as a frustrating year. Such only allowed 108 hits and 128 innings pitched, which, you know, and hurled eight complete games that year. He also compiled an earned run average of 2.81, but he never won a game the entire season. His record was 0-16 in the Eastern League that year, but he had an overall record of 0-18. Wow. The guy pitched eight complete games, had an ERA of under three, and never got one win the entire season. Now, I'm all about the record books, and I don't know minor league records. They're not as easily to find as others, but that has to be the best ERA somebody has ever had and not won a game in an entire season. 0-16, 0-18 overall. That's just mind-boggling. So, such would return the following year uh, to Burlington in 1968, and while tolling for another last place team, Such would lose 17 games while winning only 10. So the following year they demoted him and he went 10 and 17. So if you're doing the math there, he lost 18 games in 1967, then followed that up in 1968 losing 17, but he at least won 10 games that year in 1968. Well, in 1969, he actually was back in double A and triple A, and he actually amassed a record of 11 and 5, so 11 wins and 5 losses in 29 games with a 2.48 ERA. Well, um, in 1970, uh, despite having the 500 record, the Senators were very interested in getting him up to the major leagues to see what he can do. And Dick actually made the major league roster uh, coming out of spring training in 1970. And on April 6, 1970, he made his major league debut with two innings pitched against the Detroit Tigers. Well, in those two innings, he struck out three, didn't give up one hit, but he did walk three batters. But he didn't give up any runs. So zero across the board for his earned run average, but his strikeouts and his base on balls were each three apiece. Well, Dick would be up and down that year in 1970, splitting time between the Washington AAA affiliate and the major leagues. Overall in 1970, he would post a 2-2 two and two record for the AAA affiliate and post just a 1-5, one, one win and five losses with a 7.56 ERA in 21 games. Dick's last game would come in July of... 1970, on July 17th, where he got shelled for four earned runs. This will be the last time that Dick would play in the major leagues. Dick would stick around from 1971 to 72 in the Senators, then the Texas Rangers after they made the move to Texas in their minor league affiliates, and after the 1973 season, Dick was done playing as a player. So, not too far after his retirement as a player, Dick would become a pitching coach and roving pitching instructor for the Rangers minor league affiliate from 1975 through 82. He would have a stint from 1983 through the middle of 1985 serving as the pitching coach for the major league Texas Rangers. 
After the 85 season, he was let go as the pitching coach. After his time at the Rangers, Dick would go to the Minnesota Twins, and he would serve under, under managers Ray Miller and Tom Kelly as the pitching coach for the next 16 seasons. So from 1986 through 2001, Dick Such was the pitching coach of the Minnesota Twins. This would include winning two World Series titles in 1987 and 1991 with the Twins. Tom Kelly decided to retire in the 2001 season, and in that same season, Dick decided to step away from the Twins as well. In 2007, after taking time off from baseball from 2001 to 7, he would resurface being a pitching coach for the Camden River Sharks of the Independent Atlantic League. He would stay with the team through the 2008 season, and then after that, he would move on to affiliated ball again, coaching for the Salem Red Sox, a Carolina League affiliate for the Boston Red Sox from 2009 to 10. The following year, he would go coach in the South Atlantic League for the Greenville Drive as well. He also served through 2012 in that capacity. Starting in 2013, he was the pitching coach for the Rookie League GCL Red Sox. So he obviously may have retired after the 2020 season. He certainly has earned it. So I'm not sure if uh, 2020, if he coached beyond that, he might be, uh, you know, as needed coach would be the best way to put it in Florida. Uh, this was postmarked from North Carolina. So I'm guessing he's, you know, living in the Carolinas now, his home state. So you obviously can't be the GCL coach living in North Carolina, but maybe he goes down for spring training still. But obviously, with the 2020 season being shortened, maybe he just hung it up and decided to re retire altogether because as of me shooting this video, he is 79 years old. So he certainly is deserving of retirement at almost 80. So we will move on to the next return. Thank you, Mr. Such, for signing those, and we'll move on to the next return. All right, so this final one is a return, and I'm getting a step closer to getting this one done. It is the 72 Rookie Star Giants card signed by Chris Arnold, and he signed not just the rookie card by Jim Barr already, but he also signed a couple other cards here for me, and I just finally need to get Dave Rader to sign that, so hopefully you'll be seeing this one back completed in the near future. So let me tell you about Chris Arnold and his career in baseball. Chris Arnold, a California native, attended Arcadia High School in Arcadia, California. He was drafted by the San Francisco Giants in the 11th round of the 1965 Amateur Draft. At just 17 years old, Chris was assigned to the Giants Rookie Ball Affiliate, where he split time between two of their Rookie Ball Affiliates, appearing in 50 games and posting a .246 batting average, playing the infield for them. The following year, at just 18 years old, he was moved up to their A Affiliate, where he appeared in 113 games for their franchise. Then from 1960 to 1970, Arnold would work his way up through the Giants minor league system, finishing the year out in 1970 in AAA. In 1971, he was assigned to their AAA affiliate where he appeared in 121 games that year and posted a sparkling 343 batting average for the Giants AAA affiliate. Well, the Giants rewarded him with a September 7th, 1971 call-up to the major leagues where he made his major league debut and in his one and only at bat that day on September 7th Chris got a hit and drove in an RBI. Chris would remain with the big club through the end of the 1971 season and then in 1972 he would make the big league club. He would uh, be used as a primary utility man. I mean he would play almost every infield position even throw some catcher and outfielder in there would appear in 51 games for the Giants that year. Well, the following year in 1973, he would spend the majority of the season as a utility guy for the Giants, but would appear in four games for their AAA affiliate. 1974, more of the same, appearing in 78 games, playing the utility role, the bat off the bench for the Giants. And in 1975, he would split time appearing in 35 games in AAA for them and 29 games in their Major League Club. 1976, he would return to the majors, and he would appear in 60 games that year, again, being a utility guy, coming off the bench, a spot starter here, here and there, 
in the lineup wherever they needed to put him. However, in 1977, the Giants decided to send him down to AAA for the entire season where he appeared full-time for their AAA affiliate, posting a 302 batting average in 139 games that year in 1977. Well, despite batting over 300 that year in 1977, the Giants did not bring him back up to the major leagues, and they actually released him from his contract. After the Giants released him, after he spent that full season in 1977 in AAA, he decided to take his skills overseas, and he signed with the Kintetsu Buffaloes in the Japanese Professional Baseball League. He would spend from 1978 to 1980 playing for the Buffaloes. He would compile a 274 batting average and crack 43 home runs in those three seasons, along with 174 RBIs. Well, after his time that he spent in Japan playing for the Buffaloes, he decided to move back to the United States and actually wound up uh, moving to the Denver, Colorado area, where he opened his own professional sports agency. So he is an agent to this day. So Chris Arnold now is an agent for baseball players. And I'm very happy to add his autograph to the collection. And I'm very happy to get one closer to getting this done. Uh, Dave Rader is an excellent TTMer, so I've seen many other people get this card completed. So I'm very excited to be getting that in the mail to get that done myself. I also want to thank Dick Such for signing the two cards that he signed for me. Very happy to get him because I'd never gotten him before. I also want to thank Mr. Sherman. Somebody that had a decent career with the Tigers for the few seasons that he was there. I also want to thank you for taking the time to watch this episode, and hopefully you learned a little bit about some players that you may not have known from the 1970s. And as always, happy collecting. <laughs> <laughs>